Hello there, my name is Yudi and this is the Yudi Factor. Welcome to part two of the corruption in all of us. Um, I got so many feedbacks when I heard part one of uh, the corruption in all of us. <laughs> I'll share a particular one that I found so funny. A woman said to me, corruption is not limited to only money. Yudi, I'm corrupt because I'm dating somebody's husband. That too in itself is corruption. <laughs> Today we're going to take a look at uh, still the corruption in all of us and I have Barrister Evans Ufeli. He's a crusader on the right of the female gender and children in sub-Sahara Africa. What areas of your life are you corrupt? Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. You're welcome back. Barista Feli, thank you again for joining us for part two of uh, Corruption in All of Us. Today you're alone. Kechi is not here. And um, um, the corruption in all of us, the part one, uh, was, uh, <laughs> it was it was very interesting. And yes. the feedbacks that I got, uh, I got all kinds of people talking about driver's license. People talked about all kinds of things. And this lady I mentioned in my introduction talked about another dimension when it comes to relationship. A married yes. man dating a woman, a married woman or a single girl and vice versa, it's all corruption. What is corruption? It is some form of debasement. Yes. So but a lot of people see corruption as only stealing money. And we all contribute to that corruption. So today, um, moving forward. Well, corruption from the advanced uh, learner dictionary mm -hmm. You know, it's simply defined as illegal behavior. <laughs> okay. So for me, that is very encompassing. Okay. It's even more deep than what we saw in part one, the yes. definition we read in part one, yes. which is a little bit uh, structured into wickedness, mm -hmm. to certain uh, yes. issues. Mm -hmm. But the advanced knowledge dictionary said that uh, corruption is illegal behavior. Corruption itself suffocates the Prussian structures of society. Uh, it, it is something that has become a canker worm. It ranges from a lot of areas. We have uh, religious corruption, you know. Uh, people know how to use religion because people are gullible. Then those that are a little bit more intelligent in society have a way of standing on the podium of religious stands to exploit others, okay? That in itself constitutes corruption because it's a society, Nigeria is a society where um, the religious body don't, nobody watches them, nobody check them. So there is always a tendency, I'm not saying that religious leaders are corrupt. I'm saying that certain uh, religious corruption stem out of religion, that certain people, you know, create this tendency of exploiting others in that area. And in Nigeria it's very rampant. I mean, we know what it is where you know, uh, people fall over each other and all that, trying to get spiritual blessing because we live in a society where poverty has become the bane of a society. And if you check it very well, you know that poverty uh, breeds corruption very well because if you look at the holy writ, it says that a rich man's word is a strong city. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. Uh, even the poor man does not need devil. From the stand of the holy writ, poverty is already tormenting him. So you see that uh, people exploit that, uh, religion exploit that. And because religion is blind, it tells you just do this, don't question. People don't question. People, you know, the corruption keep, um, you know, breeding and people are suffocating. People are suffering from the pangs of this in society, especially in Nigeria where we find ourselves, where we, where we are right now. We also have uh, traditional corruption. We have traditional corruption where customs and tradition, certain customs that um, tends to undermine uh, the propriety of the human spirit. You know, there, there, is, there is a part of this country where women are put under blade. Women are, women are put under, they, they, are, they, are, they must be circumcised. Some of them bleed to death. That is corruption. You know, some are married off at a very tender age. You know, they, they contact VVF, they get contaminated, they die just like that. So that is traditional corruption where our custom places demands on us, irrespective of who we are. Some people are betrothed at the age of two. You understand? And when this is done, it is corruption because by law, uh, the, the, the woman 
so to speak, or the man, so to speak, is supposed to have grown into age you understand, and gets to procure consent. You have to procure consent. But here, there is consent is not, it's not, it's irrelevant. You know, you just betroth somebody and it gets, and that is corruption. It's stemming out from our tradition and custom. And we also have educational corruption. In our universities, you know, you have uh, students, lecturers, affair, you have to uh, submit to yourself for sexual exploitation before you can get certain marks, uh, certain grades, Otherwise, you, you, you will not get it. Now, you also have a situation where the students also negotiate their way through cheating and examination in the high schools, in primary schools. You have cultism, you have social vices, you have internal and external conflict and moral degeneration. These are the whole hallmark, the pack of corruption itself in Nigeria. It is a very serious issue because when we look at the government, we think that political corruption is our problem. I don't think that is our problem. The corruption in us is the main problem. Take politics aside, which also is an integral part of society, but the, 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 the corruption that brewed within our social confines you know, is such that if we do not watch it and begin to create the platform for which we will create solution around these seeming dangerous problems. We will be heading to a very destructive place. And that is why we must watch it. We also have workplace corruption. Workplace corruption. You, you know, people go to work, they go to work late, they tell lies to cover up, you know, they have to pee far, pee free. You steal uh, the paper, the, the office papers, you use the office ink, you on phone for three hours and you work for six hours, these are corruption. Until we begin to see those little things as important, until we begin to see that as the main factor in our existence, we may not be addressing what we think corruption is. If we only want to look at the president, look at the Senate president, look at the senators, I'm not saying they're immune from human errors or corruption, but I'm saying that we must check the internal corruption, the one that deals with the human soul, the one that strangles the common Nigerian, the one that perpetrates all the nook and crannies of this nation. We must begin to address it holistically. It is until we do that that we can filter up the truth and respond to the givings of society and political existence as Nigerians, as a people, as an entity. We must be very conscious of this act. From today, as you watch me, check your act because you know you, you may just be creating another circle. You know you you have you have, you have a child in the car. You are driving. There's a red light and traffic, and you just pull off. You drove off, and the child is looking at you. Okay, you are passing on a, a generational um, generational indiscipline from your own self to your children. Sometimes I begin to wonder that, I mean, in Nigeria, we, we, I think my generation, I'm sorry to say this, I think my generation have not done so well. I've not done so well, Always, almost on the, the verge of uh, um, destruction, not done so well. So we can change this, we can clean up Nigeria for the next generation, okay? This corruption when you just, heard about this, this person has committed an offense, he stole something. And the next thing you look for the next tire and put on the person's neck and set the person ablaze. Jungle justice is corruption. And I'm talking to Nigerians. Do not set anyone ablaze. Nigeria is not a jungle, so the rules of jungle should not play in a civil society. Hold the thought, hold the thought, Barry Safrili. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. You're welcome back. If you're just joining us, I have Barista Feli. He's a crusader on the rights of female gender and children in the sub-Sahara. And our topic is the corruption in all of us, how we all are corrupt in our different areas of life. Let's take it one by one. You talked about religious corruption. I think basically it's where people go looking for miracles, where instead of, because if you get to read the word of God and get to understand the Bible, there are certain things that someone will tell you and you say this is not biblical. 
Yes. But when you go looking for miracles, you swallow anything. Yes. It's like somebody, uh, when you watch uh, some of our uh, home videos, and the Baba tells says to somebody, go and look for a goat with seven heads. You know there's nothing like a goat with seven heads. Yes. Do you understand me? And the Baba Lawo will still say to you, okay, if you can't find the goats with seven heads, bring the money, I'll buy it for you. But yes. you know that there's nothing like that. Yes. So I think it's basically ignorance when it comes to that of religious corruption. It's basically ignorance of not knowing the word of God and not studying and trying to discover God for yourself. Yes. Because when you discover God for yourself, there are certain things somebody you look up to will tell you, do this, and you say, that is not in the word of God. So but because we are constantly looking for miracles, shortcuts, that is why I believe that people get yes, drawn yes, into yes, it. Yes, yes, people get drawn into it. I mean, I'm talking, you know, religion is a wonderful thing, okay? I'm a Christian, okay? And I, I believe in the power of God. I believe in God, absolutely. But I also believe that a lot of people use the God factor to exploit others. And that, that is, is why... You see, we, Nigerians, we must, uh, Nigerians are religious. Yes. It's one thing to have Christianity as a way of life. Because when you have Christianity as a way of life, you get to understand and study the Bible and let the Holy Spirit lead, lead you. Yes. But when it comes to religiosity, yes. mostly activity, mostly yes. activity, but not an atom of the word of God in you or the Holy Spirit leading you, that's when the deception comes Yes, in. when it's just to shop. You are in church because you want to shop miracles of different kinds. And uh, at the end of the day, you get into trouble because you, you want to get results and all that. So that is um, just uh, what it is. But we must begin to address it, okay? If you are involved in that, you deceive people, you have to stop it as religious leaders. We must begin to check even co-religious leaders. We must check ourselves because the corruption that is stemming from that sector is very, very big. I mean, and that is why I just decided to chip it in, not as an antichrist, but as <laughs> a, a follower of Christ, a, a good believer in, uh, you know, in the world and all that. I think you should stop seeing corruption as tribal. Um, from a quibum. Maybe suddenly somebody from Akwaibum is accused of being, uh, uh, being corrupt. Yes. And then you see my people carrying placards in support of the people when you know that what the wealth the person had, mm. has cannot be explained yes. except that he held political office. So until we begin to see corruption, somebody's accused of corruption, you say to the person, yes, we support you. You are our daughter. You are our son. But... Go and defend yourself. Yes. And stop carrying placards and demonstrating and supporting the person. And then now say it's political persecution. Or you now say it is a... Witch hunting. A witch hunting. Yes. Which is very common. And yes. probably I think that is why we ourselves encourage that corruption. We ourselves are part of that corruption. Yeah, we are part of the corruption because if the person is from our tribe, we sew kindred uniform, or what they call as you will be. And you get on the street just to protect. And sometimes you also find the, the culprits, it is when they are in trouble, they now remember yes. that they have a, a constituency. And then the constituency too will now, get up. Will get up and respond as gullible people. Follow them and you know, whip up sentiments, create unnecessary chaos in society, and begin to you know, move all over the place. So we must be sensitive enough. If somebody is indicted, let him be tried. Let him face prosecution. And if he's, if he's not cleared, if if he's he's cleared then he will walk free. Yes. But if he's found guilty, I mean, even criminal, uh, criminal uh, law or criminal practice in our, our legal system, you know, is proved beyond reasonable doubt. The EFCC or the ICPC that, you know, will try whoever, the court that will take the person to court and all that, you have to prove beyond reasonable doubt that he did it. You understand? Once there's an iota of doubt, the law is that it must be resolved in favor of the accused person. So if the person is actually not guilty of the offense, then the law is there to exonerate him. But if he's guilty of the offense, then he should go in for it. And that is, what, that is how society should be. That is how we must create... The balance of society. Way, yes. Know, and, yes. These people are taken to court and it's one adjournment, adjournment to another, one adjournment to another. Okay. And then the cases run for years 
and nothing happens. That right? is that, that that is in the past. Now we have a, a new law, okay? The NCJA, you know, in criminal uh, jurisprudence is now a law that have uh, been put in place to fast track the process of trial, okay? Now you can't have unnecessary adjournment. You cannot bring uh, a preliminary objection and stay proceedings because before, you understand, in, uh, 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 there was a case where they brought a preliminary objection and that preliminary objection went from the High Court to, to the, the Court of Appeal to the Supreme Court and they left the substantive matter and that is how it is done. You understand? So that one took 12 years. So when it got to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court now ordered that they go back to the High Court and the matter will have to start all over again. So they will now get, before you know it, the, the witnesses must have been transferred, the, the IPO, you know, in or the, the matter. The must have covered his tracks. Some people must have died. You know, you have erased evidence. You understand? And a lot of things must have happened along the line. So that is why this new law signed by the former president is what is required. Now you cannot make unnecessary adjournment. You cannot bring preliminary objection. Even if you bring it, the law is that uh, it cannot be taken in the pendency of the, it will be taken during judgment. That means the court will read judgment on that day and give ruling on the preliminary objection. That is how it is now. So it's, it's quicker now. Hold the thought, mm. hold the thought. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. You're welcome back. If you're just joining us, the topic is the corruption in all of us. It's part two. And earlier on, uh, Barrister Ophelia, a guest, uh, a crusader on the rights of uh, female gender and children in sub saharan Africa, talked about the different areas we are corrupt and how we all contribute to that corruption. So set yourself, how do you contribute to co corruption? Corruption is not, not just stealing of money. We've narrowed it down to government stealing money. But this time, we're not looking at government. We were looking at ourselves, how we all contribute to that corruption. So, Barista Ophelia, in this remaining moments, what can we do where we all are guilty? We all are guilty. Since corruption is not just money, it's a debased behavior, yeah. something that we shouldn't do, something that when you finish doing, if your conscience is not seared, it pricks your conscience. So, where do we go from here? Yes, we must begin to address this from the home front, okay? Corruption being an illegal behavior from the definition of the dictionary, we must begin to look at um, the family, which constitutes the unit, the smallest unit of society. We must begin to guard our children's rights, okay? Because as we grow older, they too are growing up, so we must guard them, teach them things that will build their moral um, rectitude, some things that will aid them, you know, to get well guided in society so that as they grow up and um, merge up with a larger society, we will have gotten children from different homes and families and neighborhood, you know, that have been properly guided. And in so doing, society would have metamorphosized uh, into the right place because we have, uh, ad we must address it from the neighborhood as well. In neighborhood corruption, we must watch it. We must make sure that um, these people are guided properly. Then why we find ourselves, you know, in higher plane, in higher um, um, organization, we must begin to look at uh, how this will affect the general public and give us a better society. And not just talking about the government at all. We also have private companies that are very corrupt. Okay, these companies who don't uh, have standards, you know, you, the life expectancy in Nigeria is 47 because of the kind of things we consume from uh, the products of some companies. Okay, so they also to find shortcuts. Yeah, they find shortcuts. To make profits more than yes, the standard organization of Nigeria, the NAFDAQ, these are regulatory authorities that should monitor. Because we're not talking government at all. But after government is the private sector <laughs> that, is, that rules our lives, literally. So we're calling on them, okay, you are a manager in a company, you know you are into production, you are into manufacturing, ensure you have good standards. 
ensure you have a good practice, ensure you put policies in place, good corporate governance policy that we make sure that everybody do the right thing. You see, we must do the right thing from every corner. It is when we do that in our closets, you understand, that we'll have a good society in future. And when people are caught, you understand, for doing the wrong thing, they must be adequately punished. So I'm talking to the judiciary, I'm talking to the law enforcement agency. Don't collect money because you want to get someone free, someone who has committed an offense. Make sure that the person go through the process. And so pay that, our taxes. Some, we dodge taxes yes, because we don't want to yeah, pay taxes. Yeah, we, we, it's we, a form of corruption. Yeah, we, we, we pay tax. We don't pay tax. You know, uh, We must begin to do all that. And uh, lastly, I also want to talk about the, um, the upsurge you know, of uh, jungle justice in Nigeria, which is a bigger corruption. It is uh, it, the, the, the highest form of corruption where you know, people just, uh, now it's not a fault of the government, okay? In River State some years ago, four boys were lynched to death. They were set ablaze, they were beaten until they died. Some years back, someone was lured all the way from Abuja to Lagos here, she was kept in the water, she was murdered. Not by the government, by society, okay? Some weeks back, a boy, was caught in a relay, some said a relay, some said Badagri. He was set ablaze, seven year old. That is internal corruption. That is a corruption in us. Some years back so in 2012. Corruption and wickedness. And wickedness. In 2012, there was a little boy called somewhere also that was set ablaze. You know, and what, what pricked my conscience, what really disturbed me was when I watched the video, the person doing the coverage asked them, what did he do? Somebody from the crowd that was pouring petrol on this boy said, they said he wanted to kidnap somebody. That means he's pouring petrol, acting on hearsay. That is how we, apart from the militants in the Niger Delta and the insurgents in the North, the average Nigerian is a security risk. It's a risk to the ecosystem, to the economic and political system. The average Nigerian is, Wicked to his neighbor, and that is why we have not succeeded. Even brother is wicked to brother, sister yes. is wicked to sister, sister we, is wicked to brother. We, we, we have not succeeded, not only because our government have not done so well, we have not also succeeded because of the way we have treated one another. We have not succeeded because of the way we treat women and children. You get a seven year old boy, you set him ablaze. There is no kind of religion or there's no kind of God in all the gods in the cosmic administration and the, the stratosphere that will forgive a people that are this damn wicked. So we must begin to watch our action. Our action is very important because it counts for us that at the end of time, we must give account of the things we did while we were alive. So I, I just want to talk to you further on this, that if you, if you know that a particular thing is wrong, if you know that if they do this to you, you will not take it very likely. Don't do it to anyone. It is better we live as people who have conscience. It's better we live as people who have grown over time, who have evolved, and begin to watch how things are done in civilized places and begin to act accordingly. We must not put our lives in jeopardy for any reason whatsoever because the corruption in us alone you know, had, has created a lot of problems for us. And this problem, we are trying to manage it, to see fit, but the problem keep, you know, you get it. So I, I, I believe in Nigerians. I believe we understand what is right. I believe we will do what is right. And as we, we, we move on, let us keep on that which is right and eschew that which is wicked and illegal. Thank you very much, Barrister Feli. Always mm. a pleasure yeah, thank to you. have you. And if anything arises from this, we'll invite you again to come and talk to us. Anything Nigerians want to do, they, and they do it, they complain in the beginning. But with time, give it time. The Nigerian, he decides to do it when there's no way out, and he does it well. I remember when ATM was first introduced, there was this cry of uh, you, the withdrawal of cash, you have to go to ATM today. Every single Nigerian has an ATM card. Just like we've been talking about corruption, everybody now in corruption, corruption. I pray that there'll be a day, that day will come when each and every one of us will try to be a brother's keeper, 
A day will come when our slogan will be, do unto others as you wish others to do unto you. Until that day comes when we begin to see ourselves as one, as brothers, sisters, not probably not from the same father or same mother, but from this God who created each and every one of us. Until we begin to hate the things that are evil. I quote the Bible here because I'm a Christian. It says, whatever things are noble, whatever things are lovely, if there's any virtue, think of those things. So I pray that a day will come when corruption will be a thing of the past. There's only lovely things, things that have virtue, things that are noble, that will begin to do to each other, that will begin to say and do, that will begin to see corruption as an enemy, corruption as something that has held each and every one of us down, corruption as something that has held to the Nigeria being underdeveloped at this time, that our churches will begin to preach. After preaching salvation, we'll begin to preach about the evils of corruption, how we can stay away from corruption, what we can do, God first and then country, that the way you want God to see you, see you, that you see your country in that same light. Until I come your way another time, this is my factor. Goodbye and God bless. Mm -hmm.